Hey, I'm Elaf, one of the co-founders of Casper AI, and in this video, I'm gonna show you a real-time demo of three different ways you can use Casper to create lifestyle photos for your products. When you get on the platform, you'll see there are four tabs, the background remover, the studio editor, the AI photo creator, and the AI stock photos tab. You can use these in whichever order you like. Starting off with the first use case, you can drag and drop a photo straight from your computer onto this box on the left. These are a pair of kids sunglasses sent to us by a user and as you can see the photo is on a white background so the background remover will remove that and when it's ready i'm going to send the photo to the studio editor tab you can send it to the ai photo creator to make a photo with one pair of glasses but i thought it would be cool to show you an example with two products in one photo you can resize it and i've just selected copy and paste on my keyboard then position them in the place that you'd like them to be in the photo and once happy i'm going to send it to the ai photo creator tab in the prompt box at the top, I'm going to write a few words about what I'd like to see. In this case, three-year-olds in a garden. And this is a good place to try out a few different prompt styles. You can be as vague or specific as you like, and playing around with different prompts usually helps you to kind of get acquainted with the software. It usually takes a few seconds to load. You'll see two photos have been generated. They look alright, but I think it could do better, so I'm going to regenerate and see what I get. Okay, now I think one of these is looking good. I'm going to select one, but I want to do some more touch-ups. If I click on the Center AI Photo Creator button, you'll see it gets transferred to the box on the left. And here I can paint over whatever I want and use AI to make touch-ups super quickly. Let's say I want to change one of the kids' hair on the right um, and, the, and the texture. If I paint over it, edit the prompt to say something like curly hair, brunette, and then generate. I think we're getting there. The photos aren't perfect just yet. I'm gonna paint some more of the hair because I missed a bit and add short at the beginning of the prompt. And then I'll regenerate. I think this one looks really cute. Feel free to keep going back and forth. I'm happy with it. So I'm gonna send it to the studio editor for some final touch-ups. So now it's on this second tab, I can add some text, change the background to white, make an infographic. I'm just removing the sunglasses that we originally placed here and I'll make it look like one of those old classic photos with some text at the bottom. And once happy, I'm gonna download it. If you just wanna download the photo without doing any final touch-ups on this tab, you can do that on the AI Photo Creator tab. There's a little button with an arrow facing downwards and if you click that, it will download to your desktop or computer. So this is the first way of generating photos around your product. I'm gonna refresh the page and show you the second way using an existing photo that you might have but want to change up a little and you could do that in different ways. For this example, I'm gonna go straight to the AI Photo Creator tab. I'm gonna upload this photo which was taken on an iPhone camera. It isn't the most flattering, but let's say you like the photo and you wanna change up the model, you could do that here. I'm gonna paint over the face and write something in the prompt box like blonde woman and then click generate. Once again, you can be more specific with your prompts. I usually like to start off with a few basic words and then add more specific words based on what I feel the AI understands. You can regenerate if you don't like any, but I quite like this one. Let's say I want to change her outfit. I'm gonna paint over the top and write a prompt that says white top and then click generate. Clicking through them, I think this one looks the best. Now let's say I wanna add something in the background since the sky looks quite plain. I could write something like bird and then click generate. I'm happy with this one, I'm gonna save it, but I'm also gonna send it to the studio editor to see if there's anything else to do. If you look at the tabs on the left hand side, let's say you want to resize the photo for a particular platform. There are some default sizes here that you could play around with and you can also manually resize to fit the page. Or if you click the fit to page button, it will do that automatically. I like how it looks here. A few things early users have also found Casper useful for is creating models of different races and backgrounds to suit their different customer demographics. For example, here we have a Caucasian woman but I could also generate a photo with a black model or any other race. Let's say, for example, I go back to the AI Photo Editor tab and paint over her face again. Write a new prompt, in this case, black woman, then click generate. It's 
select the photo I like the best, make sure the rest of the body matches in terms of skin tone. I like this photo but the hand looks a bit big so I'm going to send it to the AI photo creator, paint over it then generate. This one looks good, save it similar to before by clicking the download button or send it to the studio editor and play around with it. So that was the second example of editing an existing photo so it could be used as multiple assets. Now onto the third use case, let's say I want to create a model wearing this chain. This time I'm going to go straight to the AI stock photos tab and write a prompt of a man standing on a beach wearing a plain black t-shirt, smiling and then click generate. Here you can also see the how to use and advanced settings drop downs which are quite self-explanatory. Once the photos are created, feel free to regenerate or be more specific in your prompt. In this case, I'm going to pick one of these and send it to the AI Photo Creator tab to make some touch-ups. If you click on the F button on your keyboard, it will make the image full screen. This can help you be more specific when painting over things on the photo. If I paint the guy's face and then click F again, it will make the image go back to its normal size. I can then write a prompt like man with long hair smiling and click generate. Flick through the photos created, I think this one looks the best. I'm going to send it back to the box on the left. You can change the size of the brush on the little toggle on the right. And let's say I wanted to change the sky in the background, but I don't know what I want to create. If you keep the prompt box empty, it will work as a sort of creative mode. So the AI will interpret the image and generate something for you. You can see it's generated a few different images, a few mountains in the background. I like how this one looks, so I'm going to send it to the studio editor. Now to upload the chain, if I go onto the background remover tab and upload the chain and remove the white background from the photo, then I can send it to the studio editor tab. And here I could resize it on top of the man. It's not perfect yet, but this is where you could send it to the AI photo creator. Paint over the parts that look a bit awkward, like on top of the shoulders. And now you can see how the AI has made it look like he's actually wearing it, which is cool. Feel free to save it here or once again send it back to the studio editor. Add some text or infographics and there you have it. So these are the three biggest Casper AI use cases. We'd love to hear about different ways that it's useful to you and how you're playing around with it. Feel free to send us some examples. Thanks so much for watching and we're excited to see how it goes for you.